Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very warm welcome, Sasvir Kal and GIRU. Uh, my name is Imanchu Ratan. I'm a partner with KPMG. Uh, I shall be moderating the uh, knowledge session today, uh, which is day one of the World Food India. As you're aware, Punjab is one of the partner states for the World Food India program. Uh, the theme of, theme of the session today is Punjab creating prosperity through food for the world. At the outset, I would like to, uh, uh, you know, talk about Government of Punjab's dedication, which has been led by Honorable Minister for Investment Promotion, Ms. Anmol Gagan Manji, and uh, the CEO in West Punjab, Mr. DPS Kharbanda sir. In fact, uh, DPS Kharbanda sir is in a meeting and she shall be joining us uh, shortly. As you are aware, in West Punjab is the nodal facilitation agency for of Government of Punjab and is the single point of contact for investors who are looking to set up the business in Punjab. Uh, we also are joined by uh, Mr. Jaspreet Singh, uh, sir, who is the additional CEO at Invest Punjab. A very warm welcome to you, sir. The objective of the session are twofold. One is to showcase Punjab's competitive advantages, especially in the agri and food uh, processing domain, and also a discussion on how we can leverage and further the existing infrastructure at Punjab. We have a very distinguished set of panel members and I would like to quickly introduce them. We have Mr. Abhay Parnekar, who is the CEO of Godrej Types and Foods. He has more than 20 years of experience in leading large teams and managing multi-country PNNs. We have Mr. Mahesh Kanchan, who is the CEO of Del Monte Foods Private Limited. He has more than 23 years of in-depth experience spread across marketing and sales in FFCG and consumer businesses. Mr. Shirish Yadav is the Executive Vice President of Technology and Manufacturing at ITC uh, for the food business. He has more than 32 years of experience and has played a pivotal role in uh, ensuring top-notch quality standards and innovation in ITC's food processing operations. We have Dr. Sadbir Singh Gosal, who's uh, who holds the prestigious position of Vice Chancellor at Punjab Agricultural University. He is an internationally acclaimed agriculture biotechnologist and is the recipient of prestigious fellowships by the Royal Society London and the Rockefeller Foundation USA. We are also joined by Mr. Sandeep Goyal, who shall be, uh, present, who shall be presenting a success story for us in Punjab, Mr. Goel is a seasoned finance pro professional with a remarkable career spanning over three decades. He embarked on his professional journey with Nestle in 92 and in Moga had ever since you know, climbed the corporate ladder, ladder to the current position of the financial controller for manufacturing operations in Nestle's South Asia region. Can we have a warm welcome for all our panelists and distinguished members? Known as the food bowl of India, Punjab is a powerhouse in the agriculture and the food processing sector. It is one of the most fertile regions on the entire planet Earth. In fact, if I can quote the Honorable Chief Minister of Punjab here, Shri Bhagwan Manji, who says, uh, Punjab's land is incredibly fertile and any kind of seed can grow, grow here, but not the seed of hate. So, you know, that's the kind of word our Chief Minister has. Um, to all the investors in the house, I would like to highlight that Punjab today is an ideal destination for investments, especially in the agri and the food processing sector. And we are with that, I would want to start our panel discussion. Um, as I mentioned the topics here, we are going to talk about, you know, food for, for um, which can be exported, food which is top quality. We are also going to spend time on you know skills, um, how to kind of wrap up skills so that they are available as far as the industry grows. With that, my first question is to Mr. Mahesh Kanchan, um, and who's the CEO of Del Monte, and uh, we know that Del Monte has a new project in Ludhiana. Uh, I wanted to understand, you know, while Punjab has a lot of favorable conditions, uh, but the question is how do we elongate the longevity of farm produce? through processes as well as, you know, packaging techniques. Are there any, also are there any positive aspects from Del Monte's operations that uh, that could, be, you know, be helpful for all of us present here? Uh, thanks, Imanshi. Uh, you know, 
just a little uh, introduction about the brand. Uh, Del Monte is about a 137-year-old brand. It originated in California, US. Uh, the whole proposition of the brand is bringing produce from farm to the fork or to the table. Uh, as you know, any food, uh, food is perishable. The two or three big enemies of food, if I have to call it, one is air or oxygen. Uh, you know, oxygen is needed for us, but oxygen is probably the biggest enemy for, uh, for, for food. And you know, people always look at oxygen barriers. So air oxygen is one enemy of food. Another enemy of food sometimes is light. Uh, light is another enemy of food. You know, if you keep food in, in sunlight, it gets sunstruck as well. Uh, you know, we have uh, other enemies of food in the form of sometimes it gets in touch with water. It probably also probably could go bad. Uh, so these are three, I would say, sometimes kind of enemies of food uh, if uh, food has to perish soon. So as uh, a manufacturer of food items, so the whole idea is to elongate or give a decent life to the product so that it doesn't expire, it kind of remains there for food. Consume fresh is always good, but you know, you, you don't have the capability or ability of consuming it fresh all the time. And a lot of farm produce, if not uh, processed, probably can go waste. So one is typically, there are a lot of technologies, so I'm not a technology expert. Simple technologies that you have is, and we do it in our case, is retorting. You know, you eat a baked beans, which is nothing but uh, beans going in with a tomato uh, sauce in a can, and it's heated at a very high temperature. So retorting is a very simple technology where you heat the packaged foods either inside a particular pack and heat it at a very high temperature so that it, it uh, retains its shelf life. It can go up to as high as 36 months as well after you retort the product. And uh, you know, typically just to give you a real life example, the Indian Army which is on the border typically has to be fed retort food. So that's the benefit of technology. You know, you don't have kitchens up there in the Siachen border. So it is retort food that actually keeps our army going. So retorting is a beautiful technology. Another simple technology a lot of people would have heard is pasteurized. Uh, you know, you would have heard of pasteurized milk and that's something that came in from a long, long time. Again, that's again used. It's about, again, heating the product at a pretty high temperature. You know, uh, juices typically are pasteurized and hence you will find juices stored, uh, capable of keeping two juices for a long time. A septic packaging, which in our typical terminology, some of them probably in simple layman's terms is known as tetra pack, uh, you know, ultra heat treated technology. That's another technology by which you can preserve milk, uh, which is a very perishable item, to juices, to uh, any kind of even tomato based products to for a very, very long time. There are a lot of other technologies. There is uh, freeze drying, hurdle technology. Dehydration of uh, even dehydration, not just of fruits, even of meat, you can dehydrate. Uh, you can have individually quick freezing technology. A lot of technology. There is uh, it, it, uh, some kind of a radiation technology also that helps. And then regular ones like chemical processing. Uh, I still recall, you know, uh, we, we used to I, in my days in Unilever, we used to make soup powder, and a lot of people used to think that. You know, Soup powder has a lot of preservatives. Technically, it's not. It's like you know the way you make a spices. You grind it and you 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 keep it. That's how soup powder is made. So there is technology with limited use of uh, preservatives that you can help in storing the product. Uh, packaging makes a very important role actually. You know because it keeps microorganisms out. It top keeps these three enemies out. Vacuum packing. You will see vacuum packing is one area where the uh, air is sucked out of the uh, stuff and it helps in keeping even highly perishable items like meat, fish as well and dairy to a good extent. There's another one called MAP which is modified atmosphere packing uh, where sometimes you know you flush nitrogen in and uh, you see the product lasting for a long time. You flush CO2 or nitrogen into the product. Uh, UV blocking is another way where you block ultraviolet rays in terms of packaging. Uh, and there are multiple, Tetra Pak is another classic way in which you, 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 you can kind of keep. But Gautam, uh, Himanshu, my point of view is, you know, having elongating it to too long is also not good. Fresher the better, but it's always a fine line. But today there is technology by which you can keep produce 
uh, and people can get it as fresh as possible when they have it open the can. Fantastic. Thank, thanks, Mahesh. I think this was very insightful, right from pasteurization uh, to the you know innovative <laughs> packaging that we have today. I think it's very, very fascinating to hear about that. In fact, we saw water being packaged in a can today. So that was fairly interesting as well. But with that, let me just move to uh, Abhe now. And Abhe, we have the, you know, Godrej Tyson has a manufacturing uh, facility situated in the food park at Ludhiana. And I know you are um, exporting right now to UK, Middle East and USA. We're also planning to export uh, vegetarian frozen food to Asian nations as, as well as Australia. So we heard from Mahesh on you know, elongating the uh, farm produce, but when we're looking at storage and warehousing and also you know, exporting, you know, another important point comes up with regards marketing and branding. How do we position our products uh, up there, you know, and, and known for their quality? Sure, thanks, Imanchu. Uh, Am I audible? No. Yeah. So, uh, you know, first of all, uh, thanks a lot for this opportunity. I think uh, for us, actually, this topic is extremely uh, pertinent because we actually started taking food to the world after we put up this facility in Ludhiana. Okay. So that was the start. So we are still at a very early stages of the journey. It is, uh, uh, we, we would like to grow this part of the business uh, very strongly. And I think, uh, we, we found the right place in terms of, so the investment came in just prior to COVID. Uh, uh, was it Tyson? Otherwise was always in a more uh, meat-based animal protein categories. Uh, with this investment, we were able to get into uh, the vegetarian products. So this facility in Ludhiana, in the Ludhiana Food Park has been designated as a predominantly, is, is only the vegetarian products, uh, frozen snacks, uh, and uh, uh, while we, it's a largely a domestic market for it, but uh, we're also using it to take it to export. So that's just a quick background of the investment. Now, uh, interestingly, you know, this topic is so important. I, I, I am uh, privileged to have uh, Mr. Sadhir Singh here. I think uh, he knows probably more about the agriculture and the data. So uh, I might get a few facts wrong, but still it is uh, you know, some of the data when I saw as I was working on this and to our business, food wastage in India is a big uh, problem, uh, you know. Uh, we are the number two producer in many cereals. Uh, we are the number two producers in fruit and vegetables. Uh, but the problem with our uh, uh, country right now is that the share of processing is almost negligible. And with that, any exports are uh, you can only do if you add value to the to the whole process. So that's I think, uh, for example, in fruits and vegetables, we produce uh, uh, a very large proportion of the world's this thing, but our we process only about two to three percent of it. As in, and that too also a lot of it is just some basic uh, you know sorting and uh, non-value adding work. Rate. So uh, so the. There is a huge potential because uh, now that when over the last four or five years when we've started to talk to uh, customers internationally uh, through our partnership with Tyson Foods who were also and who are into primarily uh, animal protein uh, but they are also very interested in the you know now the whole vegetarian protein the plant based protein so uh, so I think coming then specifically to the question when you say you know so there are two parts to the one the storage and warehousing uh, there are two challenges there what prevents us to get a larger share of uh, processing i think one the post harvest infrastructure is extremely poor uh, in, in, uh, in india uh, and this is not i'm not talking any specific region or state here i'm just talking uh, the entire uh, country here that the post harvest uh, infrastructure around the cold chain uh, is very uh, poor in fact we only have 50 percent of the requirement of what we have for the, uh, the storage uh, point of view uh, a lot of that uh, storage is also single commodity. So uh, mostly are those you can keep potatoes there. So I think it's not something which is made for building some world class processing uh, 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 businesses uh, out, out of there. So that's I think on the storage and uh, warehousing now. The post harvest 
storage is not something where companies individually as in they've done a lot i think mccann has done some work in the frozen uh, sector and potatoes pepsi does some work but i think their government can play a very significant uh, role i think that's that's creating that kind of uh, infrastructure in fact coincidentally with earlier in the session which i was talking about with yes. uh, honorable uh, uh, minister of commerce at us going he, he talked about uh, this specific uh, old chain infrastructure and how can that be a big uh, a push uh, area uh, that that's the one uh, part part of it i think but still without with that also in india we have some success stories like shrimps business now they have been able to create a complete ecosystem around uh, and and has become a very large kind of uh, industry for export so i think with the right public partnership public private partnership this is something that can be uh, can be uh, addressed coming to specifically the marketing and uh, branding. branding side of it <coughs> that is the part where now at least to begin with we have started to spend more time and i would urge as an even other companies etc a lot of time what happens is you first think of uh, capacity and then think of uh, you know what will we do with that capacity uh, so uh, this like in our case this happened that we put that plan we put that plan for domestic uh, markets uh, primarily uh, but realized covid stuck a lot of businesses uh, as in we we put uh, the food service business the qsr business is we, we had set up that plan uh, we could not get that so we said okay where can we get that volume from and then we started focusing on exports i would say that you know before you putting a capacity in a food service it's important then to build exports into that plan so a lot of our approvals then we took later the various uh, eia etc approval we took much later after having put in the uh, facility so that's the one thing that uh, i think i we can from our own perspective we can say that it's a, it's a learning the other is that like one does for domestic market i think even export market segmentation and looking at it from that where are the large spaces now today so like this facility of ours we are using it to target a very specific segment which is the indian diaspora so the countries where we have very significant indian diaspora we develop products in our r&d facility in india where we have the capability uh, and the uh, science to kind of develop the best tasting indian uh, Uh, ethnic food products and have made that as our focus area so rather than trying to do too many things we just say we mapped out on let's say in usa that within usa as well probably east coast and west coast a geography the size of two or three of our states that's where indian diaspora is so only concentrate there as in there is no point trying to do too many things in 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 Uh, too many cities because that can also be very expensive so so you'll have to kind of especially in the small uh, companies and which are starting you just need to take those small bets uh, we've recently started uh, exporting to singapore uh, so the product that's now made in our ludhiana facility is going to singapore has just entered bangladesh uh, as well but we are being very selective in terms of which customers and which Uh, which countries will give us access to indian diaspora just uh, mm -hmm. so for us build this community and then the last point on branding specifically when what we have done is uh, you know and that's i think most of these companies that do but it has worked well for us is creating packaging that can travel uh, so you know <coughs> trying to then uh, create packaging for each market uh, that's never very opti uh, optimal from cost or on logistics point of view so we try to create packaging and branding that just travels everywhere and and we are able to uh, kind of uh, use that opportunity to to reduce our cost structure as well so that's a very important parameter in this so that that's some of the things i would just say has been our learnings it's very early days for us uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately this plant happened for us when we had uh, just entered uh, covid uh, so uh, but now we are seeing over the last few three years some very good growth uh, and 
hope to get to a full utilization and perhaps then additional investment here also. Thank you. Absolutely, I think that, that's, that's what we wanted to hear. Right? <laughs> But, but I think uh, two things, one is obviously the same thing that you mentioned, I think it might be uh, good for us to study what has worked well there and can that be replicated to some of the other food commodities and the other part is, you know, I think, uh, you know, targeting is what you were saying, so marketing branding is one part of the story, but I think the targeting is the third bucket which is very, very important and when we are looking at exports. So thanks for that. I mean, next, uh, I think when we are also looking at exports, quality is one of the prime focus and, and that's when I want to turn to uh, Shirish. Uh, and we know that ITC has a facility in Kapoorthala and you are kind of scaling up to export to various parts of the world. But I just wanted to understand the, you know, if you could elaborate on the uh, importance of high quality, especially when we are looking at exports, and what is ITC doing that you know others can learn, learn from? Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Himanshu. Uh, so for any product, quality is very, it is like a character. Okay, so very, very important uh, quality is very, very important. Especially maintaining high quality and uh, uh, to meet the international standards are very, very crucial. There are two, three areas uh, for business communities or any country or something. It is about reputation. So if we consistently supply the product quality good, uh, you, you go on maintaining your reputation uh, of, uh, in the business. Uh, also, also uh, uh, it, it sustains the business because if reputation is good, we will have to sustain the business. And very important with quality and uh, because this is a food product, so food safety hygiene is also very important because quality is inclusive things. But here food safety and hygiene is also very, very crucial. Uh, so it, this will help to eliminate or uh, to large extent uh, uh, like minimize uh, any risk of uh, foodborne illnesses and diseases actually. So there are various enablers. I, I would like to bucketize into two areas. One is the digital age, that is the second part. I will come to the digitalization, how it can come, uh, help and all that. But first is about the entire infrastructure, people, processes, systems and all that. So very, very crucial when we set up the uh, any facility, uh, uh, food producing uh, factory or facility, very important to design it as per latest uh, hygienic standards, food safety standards and all that. But the way we do the layout, like RM is coming and then going there one side, basically there is no crisscrossing. Same thing is for the people because zoning requirements are very important. There are some, some zones or areas that is high risk from the contamination point of view. So critical zones and then moderate and low uh, low, uh, low criticality. So keep, uh, workforce from low criticality should not be entering into the critical area. So that needs to be addressed to the zoning. And uh, uh, with, with uh, like uh, contamination and then allergens uh, becoming more and more. And for exports it is very crucial. Allergen is very, very crucial. So this maintaining zoning and all that infrastructure is very important. Uh, and also during that you also need to have this hygienic hygiene stations. Uh, hygienic workwear is also important actually, uh, workwear branches and all that. So that all this uh, uh, needs, needs to be put in properly in place. Second very important part is about workforce. The people who are going to actually produce the uh, powerful products. So it, the, the, the scaling is very important because consumer and customer needs are continuously growing. In fact, we saw during the COVID, it has uh, <coughs> increased in the awareness about the, what is food safety, what is hygiene and all that. So, uh, so, so to keep in that mind, I think uh, we, we need to continually uh, uh, go on skilling the people about the processes, systems and other, other areas. In fact, I am very thankful to the, uh, this, this is, uh, because some of the companies also nowadays looking at the <coughs> units and all that. So Punjab government has given approval for operating women workforce into the night shift. And it is uh, it will really help us to uh, uh, make our journey robust as far as uh, diversity and inclusion is <coughs> concerned. Uh, third area is about the entirety about quality control, quality uh, assurance processes and systems, which are very, very important because uh, uh, that is what ultimately defines uh, how uh, uh, we, we, uh, we, we need to put our processes and systems actually. So uh, it, it starts with the raw materials or packaging materials coming in. 
So all those raw material, packaging materials, we need to ensure that uh, those, those are meeting the minimum quality standards. If our input is substandard, there is no way you can produce your output uh, high quality. So those controls and specific systems and needs to be in place. People need to be trained on that. There should be laboratories and other systems uh, needs to be in place. So we have uh, the best in class NABL approved laboratories uh, in our setup. Actually, it has got uh, latest infrastructure. Uh, we are able to even check up to 200 plus contaminants into the uh, either input ingredients as well as the finished products. So this is very very important and uh, both but very very important area is about certifications. Because any new buyer or any, any trade partners or ex, uh, export uh, where we are exporting those countries, importing countries, they will always look for what is the standing of the company or uh, organization from where these products are coming. So certifications like ISO 22000 or FSC 22000 or there could be uh, 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 like uh, USBA and all that or European, uh, they have certain other requirements. So how we can have the certification because it also gives confidence to our team that yes, whatever we are doing is the right uh, thing. And I am very happy that uh, our, our systems uh, uh, comply with all that and uh, we have a lot of national as well as international recognitions as far as uh, uh, this is concerned. Uh, so maybe uh, time permits, I will cover uh, some other aspects about the uh, digital and other areas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shirish. What he touched upon was from a quality perspective, one is the infrastructure itself, whether it's the NAPL <coughs> labs or um, you know the general infrastructure in terms of uh, production. Uh, second, you talked about was the processes, which are very very important uh, when you are looking at uh, you know producing high quality products. And last is uh, which sets and this sets it up for my next question very very beautifully is the people part of it, which is scaling the workforce and it's extremely, extremely important to train them on the right processes and the, uh, and the, uh, and the machines, etc. With that, I think I come to Dr. Sadhbir and uh, Punjab Agriculture University is, is one of the premium universities um, in the agriculture domain and I think it's known for multiple contributions for, to the sector. What I wanted to understand from you, sir, was uh, what is what are you doing and, and the university doing in terms of scaling our youth for the future, uh, of the, which is basically uh, whether whether there are skill universities, whether there are specific training modules. What are those interventions that are key to training the youth for the future of the industry? Uh, good afternoon to everyone. So I will be talking about leveraging skill centers and education institutes in the state to make the workforce ready for food processing industry. So I will be touching four quadrants, producer, processor, consumer and policy. Currently, not only 5% of the food is being processed. So there is a big opportunity for food processing. Need of availability of skillful and trade workforce is there. Production scenario in Punjab, Punjab is a blue ball of the country and Punjab is contributing around 40% of wheat and 26% of rice to the central grain pool. Largest producer of the wheat, paddy, lychee, guava, kino, cotton, seed oil and sense of agribusiness, <coughs> primary processing at the farm gate to contribute in the large scale industry processing. Likewise, through skill development centers and food incubation centers in the institute. Cluster processing centers, agriculture infrastructure fund scheme financing schemes to be used in the developing cluster based infrastructure in these areas like chili, citrus, potato, tomato, and lychee. Industry-oriented course curriculum in the institutes for production, potential, and human resource for the food industry. Industry internship for the students in food sector. Till date, agricultural student institutes have focused on producers that needs to be expanded to the industry PPP board processing, value addition, and marketing. 
changes in the food consumption behavior and preferences. Trade specific food varieties and products healthy food like low starch wheat, high zinc wheat, millets and building entrepreneurs to work with large scale industry in the food chain. Food and nutritional security. PA is pioneer to develop and release 940 crop varieties in different crops and hybrids and out of these 229 have been released at the national level. So PA is the first in the world to have a millet hybrid that is hybrid Vajra during 1965. So first in India, zinc biofortified wheat varieties PBW zinc, resistant starch variety PBW RS 2022, biscuit variety PBW 930, BT cotton variety, single cross wheat <laughs> hybrid, likewise Gobi Sarso hybrid, canola quality hybrid, low seeded kidno variety, and musk melon hybrid, chili hybrids, pumpkin hull-less variety. A big scope for the vegetable oil industry in India. Like mustard oil. We have the mustard varieties which are double zero. Low in russic acid and low in uh, uh, other, other uh, like fatty acids. And the quality is as good as the canola oil which we are importing from the Canada and that is GM, we are taking that one but we are not allowing GM in our India but we are eating GM products. So our brassicas are same quality double zero and that's non GM. Then sunflower oil, a good scope, we have a very good hybrids in sunflower, rice brown oil, similarly soybean oil. We can grow the crop and it can be used for oil. Groundnut oil, fruit and vegetable juices, frozen vegetables, sugarcane juice, and jaggery. There is a big scope for a bottling of the sugarcane or we can tetra packing of sugarcane juice. It's in abundance in Punjab. And in Europe, you can't grow the sugarcane. But in Punjab, we have in abundance. So, so we can go for the sugarcane juicing, tetra packing, or even jaggery. People have started exporting to the other countries, particularly mid Middle East, or the Indian diaspora in US, Canada, Australia, many African countries. They prefer the jaggery, to, uh, jaggery this one. Likewise, uh, honey and its products, pollen, honey, honey pollen, all those, uh, and technologies are available. Millets products. In Punjab, we can grow all the millets. And in Europe, no one can grow the millets because millets require a hot and humid weather. So we can grow here during the like summer season. So if there is industry and people they are ready to take up the millet production in our state, industry can put up. Because last year we were celebrating the millet international year of millet. So there is a lot of awareness about the benefits of the millet all over the world. But all countries can't produce millet. And we are lucky that we can produce the millets here. So industry can be benefited from this. Like with chili powder and paste, we have a good a large number of area of chilies. And another onion, garlic powder, paste, haldi powder. We have an entrepreneur here sitting, Mr. Randhava. He is uh, doing a lot of uh, processing of uh, haldi. So haldi is big like in the US also because it's anti cancer. So people they prefer to have Indian haldi. And Punjab Haldi, we can produce this very well. PU has very good varieties also. So like Haldi Potter, this can be also. So recently, we have developed a wheat variety which is resistant starch. Likewise, all the wheat varieties which we are eating, when you eat, it goes to our body, then there is a conversion of starch into sugar. So diabetic people can't tolerate the high level of sugar. We have in our trade specific variety. This is first variety in India, perhaps in the world also. That the, the starch is resistant to digestion. So when you eat tea chapati or bread made from this RS variety, 
and it is very slowly and slowly metabolized in your body and not really converted into sugar quickly. So diabetic people can tolerate the conversion of starch into sugar. Very, very good variety. This first of its kind in India. Only PU has uh, this variety this year. Similarly, we have a high zinc wheat. Again, when there was a corona, we were taking zinc tablets. Zinc is very good for immunity system. So we have now genetically fortified wheat. We call it a wheat, zinc wheat. And you eat, so you will be getting immunized. This is again for the first time in India. No one has uh, this kind of variety in India. So these are very rare varieties and biscuit varieties because each and every variety cannot be used for biscuits, for bread, for chapati. So we have now trade specific varieties, good proper processing, need for the industry. So PA is doing a lot of work in these areas. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, good. A lot of applause for the kind of work and research that we are doing uh, right from the, you know, um, starch in that you mentioned also in terms of you know and helping obviously you know general consumer who, who are diabetic who are you know, to be able to have these foods i think it's a great great initiative and a step in the right direction thank you so much for that sir and can have it like uh, uh, you can have flow for diabetic people absolutely for diabetic people absolutely and i think you also touched upon all the you know points that you know some of the earlier panelists talked about uh, one is you know targeting whether you're looking at jaggery for people uh, you know Indian diaspora also about packaging you know sugar cane you know, and that's to the point that Mahesh Abhi mentioned uh, you know there have to be innovations done in the packaging space as well to be able to kind of export some of the food products that we have with that uh, you know let me come back to Mahesh again and I just want to understand you know if you could share for our audience here uh, some of your insights and experiences in setting up uh, your uh, food processing unit in Lodhana and also can you shed some light on what are the innovations currently which we are seeing in the food processing industry. Thanks Imagine. Uh, I mean we already had plans down south in India and uh, we were looking for a site for, the site, for another plant. Uh, north happens to be, north of India happens to be one of our biggest markets. So it was clear that it had to be in the north of the country. But we were scouting around and looking around for which part of now we will probably put the factory in. Uh, so, you know, we were putting various parameters and then seeing which places probably tick most of the boxes. A very critical parameter was uh, infrastructure. And uh, imagine you won't believe, you know, uh, our factory is in Laduval, which is in yes. Diana. The road that comes to our factory, you know, if you see the width of the road, it's fully concretized. Uh, the Ludhiana Jalandhar road. And I would say that kind of road is hardly existing in most of our We were absolutely standing in for that road. So, you know, access to vehicles was absolutely there. Uh, so the highway was brilliant, road was one that when you moved, we saw it, we were absolutely uh, impressed. Another important element was, you know, uh, we obviously don't, one of our factories down south and I've a lot of generators, I don't want to name where it is, but we were very clear that, you know, power usage has to be from the grid and not from the generator. And what we saw was, this was one state which was offering us uninterrupted quality power at a very good price. In fact, the price of power that we pay in Punjab is much lower than what we pay down south. So power was there, it was very, very feasible to get power. Uh, then another important element was the infra in terms of the food park. So if you, I just saw a video which showed the Laroa food park. If you enter the food park, it doesn't look like you're in an Indian food park. It's absolutely international standards, the roads, the, the, there are silos for storing grains, there are cold storages, there are warehouses. You name it what you need is there inside the food park. You don't have to go out of the food park. Uh, then, you know, food industry, you need water. So a good uninterrupted supply of water. And most importantly, you spoke about people. You know, people make a huge difference. The quality skilled manpower, both skilled and unskilled manpower, was all there. Uh, and typically, you know, we, we, we have perishable items. We needed cold storage. So it was all in the premises of the food park. So it was taking most of the elements. The second is, besides nearness to the market, you know, but that's whole of North India, which is a big market, uh, availability of raw material was very important. You know, we make a lot of tomato-based products. 
Our partner is Punjab Agro. In fact, the food park is in the Punjab, Punjab Agro area. And we get our tomato paste from Punjab Agro. And they process our tomato paste, which we, again, add a value to the tomato paste. And that was a big one. So corn, again, availability of corn. Our corn goes into cans. The corn comes from, again, the state of Punjab. So raw material availability was in abundance. So it doesn't have to travel too much in terms of coming into a processing unit. Tomato was one key, key area. And tomato processing was happening in Punjab, so that helped us big time. Uh, of course, subsidies helped, but more importantly, the bottom line was, uh, I would say, love for Punjab. Uh, and I, I mean it because our chairman, Mr. Rakesh Bharati, Mitchell, hails from Ludhiana. So he was very clear, his love for Punjab, love for the state, that it has to be one the way right? So we didn't have a choice. Uh, and of course, I would say brilliant support from both the state government and MOFPI for uh, helping us uh, in setting this up. It was, I would say, uh, ease of doing business was absolutely there. So Excuse this was, I would say, me? key insights. Uh, uh, brilliant support, I would say, from all the state government bodies as well as uh, from uh, from Punjab Agro, which is again a state government's uh, venture, and also from One for a side of Okay. So, Mr. Garmanda, I just was talking about why we set up the plant in Punjab. Okay. So, just to give a better for everything, we said the uh, infra was all there, beautiful roads in Ladoal, uh, the food park was all self sufficient, okay. power, water wasn't an issue, uh, good skilled manpower, and most importantly, the food park had everything. And most importantly, we partner with Punjab Agro, so our tomato paste, everything comes from Punjab Agro, so it was absolutely brilliant. And the most important element was uh, love for Punjab, that is our chairman uh, belongs to Punjab, so he was very clear that if it has to happen, it has to happen. Yeah. So uh, that's in a nutshell in terms of insights of uh, why we set up the new processing unit in Punjab. Something about innovation you spoke about, I'll just give one example. Uh, let's say if you look at tomato as a, uh, as a product, you need to kind of define which part of the value chain you want to be in. You can sell raw tomatoes, where you know you get 20 rupees a kilo. Huh? Or you could probably keep processing it. You could do convert it into a paste. The 20, 30 rupees a kilo goes to almost 70 rupees a kilo. Uh, or then you make it into a puree where you get even more. Or you get get into a ketchup, you get even more. The other value addition could be you make it into gourmet sauces, like it goes into your pasta and pizza sauces, where your realization could be as high as 700 rupees or 800 rupees a kilo. So the question that one has to ask is, are you satisfied getting 30, 40 rupees a kilo in case of selling raw tomatoes? Or you want to sell it at 400, 500 rupees a kilo by processing it into a gourmet pasta sauce. There is a value chain. There is a need for everything. The demand is obviously high for the raw tomatoes. The demand is low for the gourmet pasta sauce. So your realization and margins are highest when you sell a gourmet pasta sauce. And your realization and margins per kilo are lower when you sell the raw tomatoes. So, one, and likewise, if I have to probably put it in the form of a coffee, uh, not a category that we deal in, but uh, I think uh, we deal in that category, but you know, do you want to sell coffee beans where you hardly realize anything? Or you want to sell it as a regular coffee powder mixed with chicory? Or you want to sell it as an instant coffee where you make a little more money? Or you want to sell it as a decaf or a freeze-dried coffee where you make even more money? Or you want to sell it as a high-end coffee parlor or a coffee chain where you make even more money? So it all depends on where in the value chain you want to be and you'll make money accordingly. So, Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mahesh. And, and thanks for sharing your insights of and experiences of setting up the uh, unit in Ludhiana. I would like to wel welcome Mr. DPS Kharbanda, sir. He is the CEO at Invest Punjab, one of the, one of the very, very fine officers. And, and his energy levels are diff difficult to match, I can tell you that. Uh, but, uh, but sir, I would like to invite you to make the presentation sure. on the state of Punjab, sir. Uh, well, good evening, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am extremely sorry I am late by, I think, uh, half an hour. So, uh, delighted to see you here and uh, uh, I was a little held up at the, our Punjab Pavilion uh, with the, you know, uh, there was a lot of mad rush for Punjab 
So lot of investors, uh, maybe Nestle, maybe Tyson, maybe Godrej, all were there. And it's my passionate duty to respect my investor brothers. They are precious for us, and you are all precious. So uh, today, after I think uh, after five ten years, I literally jogged from that place to this place. <laughs> so just to meet them. Uh, anyway, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, you know, I'm thankful to Haman Shu uh, from KPMG. He's a dynamic person in KPMG, uh, working a lot for uh, Invest Punjab. And uh, my brother Abhay Parnekar, CEO of Godrej Tyson uh, Food, I think uh, you must have heard him. They are, they are doing marvelous things for Punjab. And uh, my friend Mahesh Kanchan, uh, he's, I, was, I just overheard he, he had uh, nice words. Uh, and he's a very intelligent person. And uh, Shirish Yadavji, uh, Executive Vice President. Then, uh, you know, uh, uh, our scientist, uh, uh, the great scientist, you know, uh, he's the Vice Chancellor, PAU. Mr. Sarbhi Singh Gosal, uh, you know, uh, uh, seems to be very, very, you know, gentle person, but he's a very dynamic and intelligent person. Lots of, uh, you know, laurels to his credit, you know. And uh, 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 the international, uh, uh, he's a very renowned at international level also. So, friends, uh, 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 and my friends from Punjab and uh, Invest Punjab team and KPMG team, so you are all welcome. So basically, you know, uh, 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 we have prepared a small PPT, I think uh, uh, my friends must have shared earlier also. It's creating prosperity, you know, creating prosperity and, uh, 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 you know, uh, the few gentlemen uh, uh, in earlier session, they asked for, you know, uh, uh, why we should come to Punjab. So I literally explained, don't come for Punjab because uh, you love Punjab. Don't come to Punjab because CEO is good or ministers are good. Come to Punjab. Yes, please. Uh, sure. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll. So, uh, uh, basically, uh, an investor is a businessman. He should come to Punjab only and only if he earns his he has you know big pockets and i promise invest punjab offers lot of fiscal incentives that's a that's a, that's the advantage and uh, the government of punjab our honorable cm uh, you know had directed all the officers including invest punjab to work officially as well as and morally and with passion so that is our passion to serve the industry i don't know how many industries but are sitting over here but uh, you know, uh, I must share uh, why why we are you know ever growing. So it's a 2.4 percent contribution to India's GDP. Uh, top achiever, you know, I asked uh, you know I just uh, joined earlier. I was a collector at number of places in the industry state of Punjab, and uh, I asked you know how it's top achiever because uh, uh, you know there was a business action plan reform that is called BRAP 2020. So we implemented all reforms. It's declared top ranking, top achiever by government of India. That's why you should come to Punjab because we are top achiever. And we are top performer. You can see in the PPT, Invest Punjab in state investment. This is a top TPA, investment promotion agency in India. So that's why you should come to Punjab. These are the reasons you, know, you should come to Punjab because of uh, we are excelling and we excel only not, uh, you know, Government of India never gives awards to uh, A, B, C, D. They give the award on merit basis. Uh, like uh, uh, Punjab scored 100% uh, in uh, mandate organization, strategy marketing, targeting investors, winning investment projects, aftercare, infra and website. These were the eight pillars on which, you know, the specific test was done. And our team performed very well in West Punjab team. So finally, DPIT, they, they gave the award of top performer. And uh, like a uh, uh, silver award for West Punjab business first portal in digital initiator, our uh, very uh, intelligent officer, Mr. Bandhu is sitting over here. He went there for silver award. So we, we have all type of officers who who performed, uh, you know, in, in, in a different level. They have been given different duties. We have 
set of all these sector officers you know like for every uh, sector we have different sector officers they 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 then you know have different approach and then you know they they believe in after care because when i join you know after care is very important you 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 know the investors come and if you don't uh, care after her, then it is difficult so and uh, uh, government of punjab has declared uh, you know like uh, uh, invest punjab department as single officer single platform and single mail so that's the only you know office in india ke, you know like uh, ceo invest punjab has been given powers of 62 departments under one roof so that's why you should come to punjab these are the reasons so you just agitate on in your mind ke, you know like uh, if uh, uh, you know like a uh, few investors are sitting just share these things with, with your colleagues so why should come you should come to punjab and as a, as a, another slide is explaining achiever logistic ease across different state leads so it it was having three categories uh, less than 80 80 to 90 and 90 to 100 and again punjab scored 90 plus category that's why we had fall we fall in achievers in logistics side also so these were the you know three things and then overview of uh, agri food processing like uh, you can see uh, 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 there was a time uh, uh, if I, you remember when we were in uh, education level in college or you know i did engineering so it was uh, there was time punjab was contributing 73% of uh, wheat for central pool now it is uh, still you know highest uh, it is 51% in wheat and uh, 34% in rice and uh, you can see uh, still the zone area is 99.9% it's high still highest in india and second highest is 94% that is haryana and uh, up is 84% so we are still on top in india 99.9% pata nahi 0.1% kahan reh gaya nahi to wo bhi 100% ho jana tha haan ji so anyway Uh, then uh, we have three uh, center of excellence uh, you can see uh, uh, that is a uh, vegetable jalandhar at jalandhar with israel uh, uh, government and that is it's a uh, 15 acre high tech nursery and uh, one crore seedlings uh, they are supplied uh, you know uh, supply to about uh, more than 1000 farmers and uh, about 1100 farmers have been trained on protected cultivation in uh, this uh, uh, center of excellence at jalandhar and uh, uh, you know like for agro processing sector uh, at jalandhar they have uh, future plans for hydroponics installation of sorting gradings and packing lines organic farming so all sort of things uh, you know see you can see potato jalandhar with the netherland so uh, 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 you will be say, you know like uh, just now we have uh, let me share ceo uh, ceo uh, hul was there they were having factory uh, at uh, rajpur and uh, they were mentioning that uh, you know uh, uh, we require 10000 metric ton of puree uh, this tomato paste uh, for their plant and uh, uh, just i think uh, uh, last month uh, they had uh, requested for and honorable cm punjab had directed uh, i think uh, on 1st of november vice chancellor Uh, uh, he is witness to that. Uh, uh, Honorable CM went to Ludhiana and uh, he directed me and the Honorable uh, Vice Chancellor that that's duty of Punjab that out of ten thousand minimum five thousand should be from uh, Punjab uh, uh, area and uh, now uh, we are bent upon that uh, <coughs> this uh, uh, how uh, you know minimum fifty percent demand we see sir it's now our duty how we'll cope with that so you know once. Uh, the deadline is given to the officers uh, so it's our, it becomes our utmost duty to fulfill it and only because we love our state we love our country that's the only you know if we love we have to deliver them so uh, uh, for that i'll request uh, vc sir ke uh, we have to produce uh, three crop crops of uh, tomato in a year so that's a challenge and uh, we will deliver it also <coughs> similarly we have uh, this uh, citrus plant uh, 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 this uh, center of excellence in usharpur and then uh, we have key production highlights uh, like uh, you know uh, largest producer of kinu that is uh, 12.5 uh, uh, lakh metric ton so uh, lakh metric ton means 10 raised to the power 5 metric ton 
1 ton is uh, 10 to the power 3. So you can uh, see ke 10 to the power 8 kg of uh, metric ton, uh, this uh, kilo is pretty much yes, for, for uh, this uh, scientific uh, researches and they are helping the farmers also. I remain a uh, collector, uh, you can say I, in Punjab it is called DC and, and 4 or 5 districts of Punjab. We have Krishi Vigyan Kendras. Krishi Vigyan Kendras in every district of Punjab, even so and so, in every block of Punjab. So we are helping farmers how to improve the yield, how to have new varieties, how to have high yielding varieties, how, you know, uh, uh, you know investors, uh, especially from food industry, they can tie up with farmers. You know, uh, you just make up your mind to come to Punjab, we are there at your service. Our farmers, you know, they, 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 they are happy with the traditional crops, wheat and paddy, but you know, they say that you don't change your life, so we have to, you know, uh, uh, move from our traditional things, petty and, uh, uh, you know, wheat. So similarly, largest producer of pear in India, that is 1 lakh metric ton, and largest producer of seed potato, again 20 lakh metric ton. So that's again, uh, I will, I am thankful to PAU, uh, VC sir. So good work done by Punjab Agricultural University for 20 lakh metric ton. So again, second highest yield of wheat, that is 4200 kg per hectare. That's the, <coughs> uh, you know, highest yield of wheat. Uh, similarly, livestock, dairy, fishery, overview, I am just explaining. Uh, uh, egg production, you can see, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, these are uh, the uh, sunrise uh, sectors, like uh, uh, shrimp, recently agriculture, biofrog, share of India's uh, total livestock, and uh, uh, if you see egg production, you will forget the number of zeros. Uh, just uh, going through the PPT, it come, becomes 6 lakh crores. You know, if you see 6 lakh crore egg production per annum. So, it's, it's a take how you, you know, get it. Uh, uh, like, uh, similarly, uh, we have, uh, as the government of India says, OD, OP, one district, one product. We have 23 uh, districts uh, in state of Punjab. And uh, every district uh, is peculiar for a particular type of uh, uh, product, maybe pickle, maybe meat, honey, it's a long list. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, other districts never produce, but one district is, uh, you know, like uh, they are producing uh, uh, to that, that level. <coughs> Similarly, you know, like uh, mega food parks and agri markets, let me tell you, you know, there are three mega food parks awarded to Punjab under uh, Ministry of uh, Food Processing and uh, linking agri-production to market by bringing uh, together farmers for maximum value addition and minimizing wastage and increasing farmer income. So we are, their units are at mega food parks, they are eligible under Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana uh, under which grant in aid is up to 35% to 75%. So, uh, like uh, at uh, Subjit Mega Food Park, uh, it's working since 2020, and uh, the big shop, big uh, you know companies like Gordon, Tyson, is is Iskon, Balaji. So they are already into this, and uh, still a uh, uh, lot of plot plots are available in this uh, Subjit Mega Food Park, and uh, <coughs> the size of uh, each plot uh, is ranging from you know 800 to 7,000 square yard. They are available in this uh, 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 Sujit Mega Food Park and uh, it's a uh, uh, plug and play, I will say. You just decide and uh, it should it will be at your doorstep. Similarly, you know, like uh, we have International Mega Food Park at Fazilka and uh, the main government uh, food park, PAC, that's Punjab Agri Industry, the Mega Food Park at Ladoval. This is again, uh, you know, 100 acre, uh, you know, uh, plot, uh, park. So it's all fully developed plots and all uh, uh, plug and play. So uh, bulk material and handling equipment, cold, cold storage facilities are there and common effluent treatment plants, uh, they are already there. So uh, uh, if we uh, shift to, you know, next slide, uh, ease of doing business. So everybody, you know, uh, like in, in, in every summit, they talk of ease of doing business and uh, uh, I must uh, share with you the easiest way to doing business, uh, I'm not say, as a CEO I'm saying, I still like, uh, you know, with, the, with, the, with full confidence I say, it's the easiest way is in Punjab only. 
So uh, we have uh, 140 regulatory services and uh, 23 departments. 36 fiscal incentives portal integrated with national single window system and uh, as I explained uh, we are top achiever by DPIT, Invest Punjab top performer uh, because we are the invest, uh, top uh, IPA, Investment Promotion Agency ranking uh, by Government of India and uh, I must tell you uh, the fiscal incentives, the last part, so uh, uh, just for uh, you know example say uh, in last uh, 16 months, in last 16 months, uh, the government of Punjab had given 8,345 crore to all the investors who have invested in Punjab by means of electricity duty exemptions, uh, 1922 crore, SGST, 2,304 crore, stem duty, 14 crore, food process, property tax, CLU, EDC, and power subsidy. Uh, you know, like uh, all investors are there after power. Power subsidy bill is, uh, you know, it is uh, 3,910. It is 3,910 crore. Uh, that's the power subsidy. So you can well imagine, so, so, such as, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, Jisko uh, Punjabi mein kehte hai, gapha milna. You know, it's that, that of sort of thing. So, ye to aapko dekhna hai ke, you know, uh, se aapne, you know, it's a win-win situation. So that, that type of uh, thing uh, government of Punjab is offering and uh, with the, the new government, uh, uh, it's a youngest government and uh, the dynamic government, they are helping the investors and uh, I must uh, share just last fortnight, there was groundbreaking ceremony of uh, Tata Steel plant in Ludhiana in High Tech Valley and High Tech Valley is again a park, it's a 421 acre. And uh, it's Tata's uh, uh, first uh, uh, electric arc plant in India after Jamshedpur. Jamshedpur was having a blast furnace technology and this is a steel arc plant from uh, uh, iron scrap. You know, and uh, the beauty of this plant is uh, it's pollutionless. So because it is electric uh, from electric furnace arc, uh, arc plant and uh, CEO Mr. Narendra he personally came there and Honorable CM was there and uh, 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 CEO uh, Tata, he was all praised for Punjab and he uh, said uh, that Tata jahan aa jata hai, to, you know, wahan ki prices are 3 farmers ki hogi. Farmers say that our land bhi le lo, hamari bhi le lo. So all sort of, all sort of things are going on and that 421 acre ki ab, uh, we are making it 820 acres there. So uh, uh, PSAC, our, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the agency of government of Punjab, Punjab Small Industrial Export Corporation, the Honorable CM has directed them to uh, acquire the adjoining land uh, uh, to that high-tech valley uh, so that, you know, the basic facilities we have already set up there, like uh, uh, its approach road is concrete road and then uh, its a common treatment plant is there, then, you know, uh, the canal water has reached there Specifically, government of Punjab has uh, constructed a special water drain for that po that pocket, and uh, uh, underground pipes have been laid. So deadlines uh, uh, on very much that day. You know, the CM said that it's duty of CEO in West Punjab to assign the deadlines to all the departments so that they finish all the deadlines. Uh, you know, there were four departments that was. Uh, uh, installation of uh, 220 kV uh, 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 lines were there. So electricity department was directed that it should be over by 31st of December. So all deadlines were given. So uh, in Punjab, uh, as per the direction of CM, we give deadlines to all the departments and they are supposed to deliver. If uh, uh, they don't deliver, so it's the duty of Invest Punjab to present the case to CM, then, then uh, they have to face the music. So that's the part uh, going on in Punjab. So uh, if we move to next uh, slide, uh, that is slide number 8. <coughs> so we have already covered uh, regulatory powers vested in MS Punjab Department of Labor. All I have explained earlier that uh, we are the unified regulator. We believe in deadlines. Similarly, you know, like uh, robust connectivity. So I think uh, <coughs> I remain uh, uh, Director of Rural Development also. There are uh, 13,710 villages in Punjab and uh, all villages in Punjab, they are uh, 
connected by nice roads it's a first link is 100% and second link is more than 90% second link that's the beauty of uh, uh, punjab that uh, every village of punjab is uh, 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 connected from two sides so uh, uh, like uh, recently national highway authority of india you know they had uh, a lot of network in punjab in uh, like uh, uh, from delhi to amritsar uh, it is a uh, you know in matter of few months it will be 4 hours from delhi to amritsar because uh, jammu katra delhi highway is is under construction <coughs> and uh, uh, the honorable cm has directed all the departments that uh, you know uh, nha has submitted the amount for compensation to the farmers and uh, deadline has been given so police have been directed to give possession to the to nhl so that time bound construction is there and uh, uh, it is by 31st of march 24 so this four hour dream from amritsar to delhi will be there so that's the connectivity part and uh, i must not uh, fail to share uh, there was a video uh, you know in social media uh honorable uh, minister nitin gadkari and uh, uh, honorable cm punjab they were sharing that it is it's a through air sky amritsar delhi will be half an hour so it you know they, it's it's a anyway dream project of india so if at all it is it materialize it will start from amritsar delhi so that is the connectivity part i was just sharing then the ease of logistics uh, uh, we have inland container depot multimodal logistic parks icps acc so these are uh, the logistic part and then ease of logistics and then you know uh, uh, i must share uh, people living in farther end from punjab they must be having your okay some lot or lot not a problem some this problem that problem but mind it who have invested in punjab they have not faced any labor issue any power issue everything is so smooth and uh, uh, and you know problems can be there i don't say it's a total ram raj but you know we the administrator are meant to solve it so ukka bukka problems jo hoti hain and we our collectors are very efficient they are directly connected with cm immediately directions are given to all the collectors that uh, uh, you know to ensure that uh, law and order problem doesn't exist and uh, our industry is the backbone of state of punjab and uh, they must uh, you know get all type of facilitation so similarly you know we have skill force and premium institutes uh, i was earlier secretary technical education and industrial training so uh, we have about uh, 137 government itis and 26 polytechnics in state of punjab and four ptus in state of punjab at uh, bathinda kapoorthala ferozpur and um, gurdaspur so we produce uh, about uh, 1 lakh skill force not classes but masses i am talking about we build you know like your welders your carpenters your fitters all sort of this is through government uh, institutes and uh, similar number of there are in private side so a skill force there is no scarcity of skill force and uh, you know like uh, 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 with the uh, with the tatas sanatan textile and uh, jsw steel i must share jsw steel they had purchased about 30 acre of land just last week in rajpura for opening another steel plant in in punjab Uh, i think they are investing about 20 100 cr in punjab so uh, and uh, uh, grasim singh grasim paints they they are having you know they are uh, you know uh, opening uh, a new factory they are in uh, uh, koraha that is in ludhiana district so uh, that will be the second largest uh, uh, paint factory in india after asian paints so all big houses uh, uh, you know they are moving towards uh, uh, punjab Uh, i'm not uh, boasting that way uh, i met an uh, uh, you know industrialist from netherland last week mr mark so he had come from china he said uh, uh, mr ceo i had spent about uh, 12 years in china and uh, mind it uh, and he was you know he is a manufacturer of 5 crore uh, machine uh, uh, which is you know useful for uh, this uh, water logged area he, it you know it removes uh, the extra water and make the water uh, land fertile so he said all the way from china so i am investing in punjab god knows uh, what thing fascinated him i asked him you, he said you know your all uh, 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 the land your incentives 
and the passion of Punjab has fascinated me. So I will be investing in Punjab. So, so all sort of sort of things uh, it happens. So uh, now uh, uh, there are a few uh, lists I am just just sharing with you, which I have already told that about uh, 9,000 uh, CR which we have given in last six months. These are the few examples: uh, exemption reimbursement from stamp duty, 100% uh, exemption, then 100% exemption from change of land use, EDC, then market fee, rural development fee, electricity duty exemption, SGST, and uh, you know, and next page is you know, like uh, exemption from property tax, employment subsidy. You know, I think uh, uh, only two states in India offer this uh, employment subsidy. One is Punjab. And we offer up to 48,000 per employee per year for five. Uh, uh, you know, government of India has, uh, in the recent uh, stat, stat that uh, the maximum number of MSME in northern India, you know, the state is that Punjab has the maximum number of MSME in northern India. That's again, I think it's uh, if I'm not wrong, 1.73, lakhs uh, uh, number of MSME have been registered in state of Punjab in one year, in last one year. That is the achievement and that is uh, not, uh, I am saying, it's Government of India data saying you can visit Google also. So uh, again, how come they, they are fascinated if, uh, uh, you know, they can be fascinated, everybody can be fascinated and that's the data I am just showing with you. Uh, next is uh, investment opportunities I already shared. These are the production of organic food, agriculture biotech, high quality and pest resistant. And uh, similarly, the next slide also for processing part and then investment opportunities is infra and logistics and our partners, you know, these are our uh, esteemed partners. I am sorry, if I have not given any name, there is a list, plenty, plenty, plenty number of lists. So it's a big list uh, for our partners in growth. So, so and I will and, and I'll say join us in building a progressive Punjab. Thank you so much. Jay. Thank you so much, sir. I think that was a uh, you know, very passionate presentation about Punjab, and I think you've given us so many number of reasons uh, to invest into Punjab. And if I can pocket them into three or four you know groups, one is the raw materials. As sir mentioned, there's abundance of raw materials in Punjab, uh, both for fruits, vegetables, as well as food grains. Uh, you know, second you talk about infrastructure, we have the right infrastructure. We have a number of uh, large food parks, we have, you know, centers of excellence, which are in, in partnerships with global, uh, you know, uh, counterparts. You know, third, if you talk about connectivity, and some mentioned, you know, you know, and the upcoming projects about Delhi Amritsar also, but within Punjab also, I think we have robust connectivity uh, and we've been ranked among the top achievers in the logistics by the government of India as well. Uh, and fourth, if you talk about ease of doing business, and sir talked multiple times that, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, you know, ranking is one part of the story, but you have to really experience, you know, investing into Punjab and going through Invest Punjab to uh, realize the kind of uh, seamless facilitation that's being provided by the government of Punjab and we will have later you know, Mr. Sandeep come from, you know, talk about his own experiences of being uh, in Punjab ever since the 80s. So thank you so much, sir. I think there's a lot of reasons for us to consider and if there are any investors here, for them to consider Punjab for setting up their new facility, um, you know, in the agri and food processing. And I'll take the, sir, uh, you know, the panel discussion forward. And, uh, you know, I would come to uh, Abhay. Abhay, uh, you know, we talked earlier um, about market right on you know, these Government of India schemes and also the FTAs that are being signed and how investors can leverage these. Sure, sure, Manchu. First of all, thank you, Prasandaji. I think the energy that came into the room with your presentation and I think the passion with which you spoke, so amazing, I think. So I must uh, thank you for that. Uh, so I just want to go back once again and sure. an interesting story on the marketing part. So sure. I just want to very quickly, I know we, we are constrained on time, but uh, uh, you know, Hamara, uh, one of our products, which uh, so when we were pitching to the US, one of our customers, so because uh, uh, Dr. Sadhvi also mentioned about millets, so we developed a product, millet patty, you know, so and which is being manufactured in this uh, plant uh, in, in Punjab. So uh, we were pitching it to the customer, and I think 
uh, if we didn't find traction for the product tasting, whatever you uh, product was, so at least uh, we can say with a fair bit of confidence that while we receive uh, PLIs in this case in our investment in Punjab, but the overall ecosystem now is also uh, working well for us and we are able to kind of exactly like I started by saying that the food to the world, it has become our facility to uh, start our uh, export. The second thing also I would say to look at is, you know, one way to look at it and it is near accounting. So you can see it as that my project cost has come down. But I would say to look at it also in terms of what can you grow by making your products more affordable. And I think how do you leverage that advantage. Uh, so it's just a matter of perspective. Benefit of what you're receiving is the same. But how you're looking at it and I think over a, this is what we are, as we are now tapping into a lot of exports market right. is to see it in that way that how can we use some of these uh, advantages but be very competitive uh, in, in our uh, uh, pricing. Uh, and the last thing I would say on specifically on the FTA, the thing to look at and I think it should be uh, uh, in the case of uh, uh, with Southeast uh, Asian countries, the way that uh, trade agreement has transformed uh, the French fries uh, industry. I think uh, it's phenomenal. In the last couple of years, two, three years, the amount of product that has been exported there, uh, so much so that this year, uh, the capacity of all the, you know, now there is over capacity on the French fries plant, but the supply of the potato has run out. So I think uh, it has just transformed that uh, so how can we take benefit of that and some of the companies uh, which you also mentioned, I think uh, Iskon, Balaji, etc. Yes. They have done extremely well in taking advantage of these. So, so these FTAs can be game changers if you just focus on the right uh, category and then win your business uh, model also. That's what I would say. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. And in fact, that Alutiki example was very interesting and I think that's going to be one of my key takeaways from this session also. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Next, moving on to uh, Shirish and Shirish, you talked about a lot of these quality processes, infrastructure as well as upskilling, uh, you know, people. But I want to also talk about the role of technology specifically uh, and how it can help strengthen the processes and also to help improve the overall quality of food. Thanks, thanks, Imanshu, and thank you, sir. Uh, as I see, we experience what, whatever uh, from buying of the land till the commercialization and all those policies and all that. And recently, in fact, uh, first question I was talking about 24 by 7 uh, currently because we are largely focusing on diversity and inclusiveness. True. I think your uh, Punjab state has uh, made that happen now, uh, of, uh, and we are we are on our journey. Another big area I think is happening on the solar policy, yeah. what has come up actually and we have to invest that. Because uh, uh, nowadays for the uh, ESG is becoming big norms actually. So policies with respect to biomass and all that, we have put a biomass boilers and then uh, we are going to source this from the, uh, the local uh, things and then with solar we will be able to really get a green uh, energy. Uh, so coming back to the uh, your question about uh, digitization and all that, it is very, very important uh, how we can have our production facility specialized basically. So I just wanted to give an example like we have an atom manufacturing facility in Kaputhala. So we also have in-house Mandi also. So trucks or tractors, if it comes, it gets directly people, uh, so there is no touch and then it gets into the primary cleaning, goes into the silos, uh, storages and then from there it comes to the processing. Only packet, once packet is there, even palletization we are now putting it, yeah, so people, yeah, <laughs> so thanks sir. So, so there is no touch actually, a lot of the investment and uh, technology has put in place. So one point uh, before coming to the uh, digitization part, what we are doing, I also wanted to mention about the consumer related differences and the capital mechanism and all that. We, uh, as I say, across for food business, we have put a system in place 24 by 7 capturing the whatever consumers are saying about our products actually or our company or something. We call this a sixth sense and uh, then, then it really helps us to do the uh, root cause analysis or FMEA or something. <coughs> so understand and then fulfill uh, or correct our uh, uh, like uh, processes and system if something is wrong. 
uh, as, uh, coming back to the digitization, we are putting the quality management system as a platform across all our factories. Uh, aim is to have a totally paperless uh, shop door. So we are already in advanced stage, another six months time, it will get implemented everywhere. There is no logbooks, all these digital uh, logbooks will be there. Entire data will be there, and nowadays you know that uh, data is a gold mine actually. And with uh, new technologies with AI, ML, we'll be able to really analyze it uh, very, very effectively. Immediately we can correct any, uh, anything uh, with respect to quality, because the topic is quality. Anything is going wrong or something immediately can be corrected. It will wait, it will reduce our wastage. We were talking about wastages because if you don't have right quality, wastages go on in increasing. Actually, it will reduce and we'll be able to give the uh, right kind of quality. Also, it will be single truth for everyone because it is a transparent mechanism. It will be single truth for my managers of uh, workforce as well as anybody. Uh, we wanted to share that with government agencies, right? This is and all that. Uh, last point I just wanted to touch upon the sustainability uh, so which, which is again very very important and government is really supporting all those initiatives and we are we are we are uh, very keenly investing behind that and uh, will be will be uh, wanted to do that actually so in nutshell uh, this this entire area about quality and all that very crucial to maintain the uh, business growth as well as the maintain the reputation of the company, reputation of the state as well as the country. So very, very crucial from that point of view, quality, food safety, hygiene needs to be maintained. And uh, it is our endeavor as ITC to, uh, to create world-class Indian brands so that uh, we'll be able to export. We are currently exporting so many of our products, so it will be really helpful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. In fact, it's companies like you and all the ones that are present here who are going to make our brand shine, you know, Punjab and India. So, so thank you so much for sharing that. Next, I will come to Dr. Gosa uh, and, and sir, I think, uh, in fact, Karbanda sir earlier mentioned and I will pick that point uh, to pose the question to you that, you know, for example, industry is requiring a specific brand, you know, type of tomato. And, and you know, we have to fulfill that kind of a demand so that the industry can grow. So in that context, uh, you know, what kind of role industry academy or partnership can you know, do? Especially when we are looking at the addressing the needs of the industry and also kind of providing the right skilling to the work. Yeah, very good. Uh, like PAU, when it was established in 1962, it was established on the pattern of Ohio State University in the US. So since then, we are maintaining the quality of education and research. And that's why this year, PAU was ranked number one among the all 63 state agriculture. So from now onwards, not only quantity, because at that time when our country got freedom, the quantity was a problem. We were not having sufficient food. But now we have a sufficient food rather than surplus food. So we are also focusing on the quality aspects. So along with the quality, we are doing quality. As you said, like in tomatoes. So in every, the crops which are going to be processing industry, so we think about uh, which trade specific varieties, like uh, in tomatoes, we have a variety of Punjab Rata, which is very good variety for processing, making paste of uh, tomatoes. Similarly, I, I told earlier the wheat varieties, resistant starch wheat, then high zinc wheat, then we have the carrots, like open contents, colored foods, colored vegetables. Nowadays, people have a lot of awareness that the colored foods or colored vegetables, colored foods, they are anti-cancer. So most of our like vegetables and produce or food products we are making are colored ones, rich in anthocyanin and other vitamins. So that so we have very quality aspect. So for this we have the training also, like uh, we have the skill development center at Punjab Agriculture University. So every year we are conducting skills in more than 30 skills, shop trainings, uh, medium size training like that one, and entrepreneurship. We are developing there. We have the incubation center, which is similar to the Ohio State University. So where the entrepreneur comes, then bring the material and web skills and confidence, then he can set up their, their own industry. So it's an incubation center. We have the Punjab Horticulture Post-Harvest Technology Center located at PAU, which is helping 
in the quality products or processing, uh, giving training in primary uh, processing like cleaning, grading, sorting, and packaging of the products, so that good products, if like our base material or the, you can say, the uh, raw material is of good quality, only then the <coughs> final product will be of good quality. So, like have a good variety, good quality, then chemical reproduction, there should not be any residue. So we are training a lot of training because in export the biggest problem is residues. So now we are producing varieties which are tolerant to diseases and insects. There is no need of like insecticides or pesticides. And then we are giving training. We, we are giving the training. If you want to use some chemical, we have we are training them that go for only green chemicals which have very little residues. So we are very like uh, focused how to have the quality of the product uh, for the international markets, genetic quality as well as the production technologies. And similarly, uh, we have three dedicated departments in the industry. One department is food and nutrition, taking up the quality aspects of the food. Second department is food technology, working on well nutrition and food processing technologies. And third one is food engineering. So all machinery which is required for uh, making like products. So they have uh, doing, we have, we have even PA when established in the villages, agro processing centers, small small centers. So those can be scaled up. So PA is focusing on all these aspects and uh, these will be very useful for the industry also. And we are very open if industry comes. Even now industry has started giving fellowship, scholarship to our students and they want to get need-based research because we have to give the research problems, they give the money like scholarships, so then we give the problem whatever the industry wants to solve their problems. So we are very open. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we are all impressed by the work that PA is doing. Uh, coming to the last leg of our panel discussion, I would like now like to invite uh, Sandeep Goel from Nestle to for his sharing uh, of experience, you know, from a Nestle perspective, Nestle has been there in Moga for quite a while, and we wanted uh, you know to hear from you on the experiences and the journey that Nestle has had in Punjab. Yeah. Oh, we are at the back end of the evening and it will be a challenge for me to match the energy levels of Nestle, you have a lot of energy. <laughs> so, Honorable uh, CEO in West Punjab, <coughs> esteemed uh, dignitaries, dignitaries on the dais, members of the industry and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very good evening uh, to you. Uh, firstly, I am grateful uh, to Invest Punjab uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, at this esteemed forum. As far as uh, Nestle is concerned, uh, we started our journey in India from Moga in 1960 uh, when we established our first factory over there. Now, over the years, uh, Nestle is uh, so much ingrained in the social fabric of Punjab and today we are producing 105,000 tons of uh, products uh, in Moga. We uh, produce uh, brands uh, like uh, Milk Maid, Everyday Dairy Whitener, Everyday Ghee in the milks uh, category. Then we have our brand uh, Cerelac uh, Baby Food, uh, then Maggi Noodles, uh, Maggi Sauces. So there are a uh, lot of uh, products which come out of Moga. Not only this, uh, we are collecting on an average uh, about 8 lakh uh, liters of uh, milk every day directly from over uh, 70,000 farmers. And over the years, uh, we have developed uh, dairy farming in Punjab by supporting farmers in terms of hygienic milk production, productivity improvement, veterinary support, feed and fodder management, milk quality improvement, and thereby uh, creating shared value for all the uh, stakeholders uh, through uh, direct and indirect employment. Say so our uh, uh, various uh, programs in the milk shed are based on three themes. 
रूरल डेवलपमेंट वाटर कंजर्वेशन एंड न्यूट्रिशन अवेयरनेस इन कोलैबोरेशन विद पंजाब एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी वी रन the healthy uh, kids uh, program in the villages uh, the through uh, the schools in the villages and uh, we are we provide uh, nutrition uh, education to the kids not only this uh, we also provide uh, uh, sanitary uh, uh, toilet facilities for uh, girl childs in the schools So in the recent years, uh, with uh, excellent uh, support of Invest Punjab team, we have uh, made significant in, in, in investments in expanding our existing capacities. We have modernized our facilities, and we are also investing in making the entire uh, milk uh, value chain more sustainable, starting from the farm uh, to the fork. We are proud to share that our Bio biomass boiler project, which will use the biomass briquettes made out of this rice uh, straw, which is uh, today getting uh, burnt and is uh, causing all kind of pollution. So, to some extent, uh, with this, uh, we will be able to say contribute our share in uh, terms of reducing uh, this double burning. And uh, this uh, project is uh, expected to go live, uh, I think, in early part of next year. Additionally, uh, we are investing in uh, various. Uh, we have invested rather in various water conservation projects, such as like harnessing the uh, water which is naturally present in milk. So we are uh, basically through various uh, RO uh, technologies, we are extracting uh, that water from the milk, and uh, we. are then uh, using uh, that water back in the process so this is uh, allowing us to say reduce our uh, ground water withdrawals and to uh, address uh, say methane emissions uh, now uh, these cows uh, emit uh, that methane so we are in the process of investing in anaerobic uh, biodigesters uh, which will convert uh, the manure cow dung into domestic cooking uh, which which will convert uh, this manure into biogas which the farmers will use uh, in uh, their domestic uh, cooking and running also various other equipments at the farm and the digested slurry will then get used uh, as a fertilizer uh, say eliminating or reducing the need for urea not only this we have also invested in farm cooling uh, tanks uh, at the source so that uh, the milk uh, after the milking uh, gets chilled and uh, the microbiological count uh, remains at uh, like excellent levels now uh, our plans are to invest further in farm mechanization cow health uh, monitoring through digital means other health management fertility improvement leading to say, overall milk yield improvement which will enhance uh, the farm income now we are uh, immensely grateful uh, to the government of punjab uh, for formulating a very industry friendly policy moreover uh, the investment invest punjab team uh, has been instrumental in providing excellent support and uh, guidance uh, their passion is matchless the team possesses in depth knowledge of the policy and goes the extra mile uh, to address any questions or concerns uh, raised by the industry like they are always a phone call away invest punjab serves as a single window for all approvals and uh, clearances this uh, like truly exemplifies what uh, ease of uh, doing business is tremendously like big uh, salute uh, to the uh, invest punjab team <laughs> means all uh, the officials of invest punjab starting uh, from ceo sir uh, then mr gupta shubham everybody like uh, they are so approachable and it's a pleasure to interact with them once again i extend my heartiest gratitude uh, to invest punjab team for their unwavering support and i wish them all the best in their endeavors to maximize investments in punjab 
and thank you ladies and gentlemen for your time and attention thank you Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Sandeep. I think uh, you know, there's no better validation, sir, than hearing right from the industry, and, and those comments really come from the heart, is what I believe. Uh, but thank you so much again. With that, we come to the close of the session today. I think it was a fantastic session. We discussed uh, so many aspects of the agriculture and food processing industry. But uh, let me just first thank, uh, you know, uh, as part of the word of thanks, the CEO in West Punjab, Karbanda, sir. For uh, for you know lighting up the stage, if I may say so, and uh, you know this is cricketing season, sir, and I think you really hit the ball out of the park, and I'm sure you know in this match, I think you were the man of the match, but but I think great great uh, presentation, sir. I think we thank the kind of insights and uh, the reasons that you have given for the people here to invest in Punjab. Uh, our, my gratitude also to all the fellow panelists, you know, Mr. Abhay. Uh, Parnekar, CEO Gojar Tri Tyson Foods, Mr. Mahesh Kanchan, CEO Del Monte, Mr. Shirish Yadav, Executive Vi uh, Vice President, um, ITC, and uh, Dr. Sadhbir Singh Gosal, Vice Chancellor of PAU. Uh, I think it was a very, very enriching discussion and the points that came uh, came in, I, they, they were multiple takeaways both uh, for me personally as well as I'm sure for the audience as well. My also gratitude goes to Mr. Sandeep Goel, who is the financial controller uh, Nestle South Asia region for sharing Nestle's experience in Punjab. And I would also want to you know, thank all the participants, the World Food India organizing team and the Invest Punjab team for pulling this session together. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, with that, sir, I will request if you could give the token of appreciation or, to all the panelists. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I think this is the end of the session. And, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, as uh, Himanshu already told us, uh, it's a cricket season and we already hit the boundary. Uh, it was uh, really insightful to hear from the expert, uh, the giants of uh, every and food processing industry, especially from uh, Vice Chancellor Gosal Saab who himself is a lighthouse in terms of uh, knowledge uh, as far as uh, agri and uh, biotech and uh, PAU itself is a name which is known uh, throughout the world. Uh, my special thanks to all the participants and all the thanks to uh, my panelists, uh, especially uh, to Mr. Mahesh who was uh, delving on to food processing and food packaging and moving on to Mr. Abhay who was speaking about food wastage and the opportunities that we have in the industry and uh, then to uh, uh, Shirish uh, who was talking about how he came up to finally into uh, Punjab and started their uh, business uh, for the ITC and uh, as the theme of the uh, session itself is prosperity uh, through food for the world uh, Punjab has always been uh, the front runner as far as uh, food is concerned uh, if we say uh, particularly for the wheat uh, which goes back to around 7800 uh, BCs uh, the cradle of civilization has been Punjab. The uh, remains of Harappa and the Mohanjadaro still remains there. So we uh, as, as, uh, we uh, uh, sincerely expect from you that you would uh, sincerely be coming and looking forward to be a partner in uh, our prosperity through food uh, for the world uh, theme that we have. And looking forward to have you in Punjab very soon. Thank you. <laughs>